Okay, so the recording has started. So for this lesson, we're going to be looking at solving linear and quadratic systems. So in grade 10, you solved linear systems. And when we did that, we basically looked for the point of intersection of two lines. And we did that two ways. We did it graphically, and then we did it algebraically using substitution or elimination. Now what we're going to do is instead of just using two lines, we're going to be using a line and a parabola. So let's first start by looking at our different options or different situations we can have. So we're going to look at how many points of intersection are possible between a linear relation and a quadratic relation. So to start, we could have a situation like this where I have my parabola and I have a line that goes underneath it like this. So I could have that I have zero solutions. That absolutely could happen. I could also have where I have my parabola like this and my line goes right by, touches it really quickly once like this right on the edge. And in that case, I only have one solution or our most common case would look like this and I would have two solutions. So as we go through this, you need to be mindful of the fact that we won't always have two answers. Sometimes we'll have no answers, sometimes we'll have one answer, or sometimes we'll have two answers. Now let's go through the steps that we're going to take to find our point of intersection or points of intersection. So first, we're going to set each function equal to one another. And the reason we're setting them equal to one another is we're wanting to find the point or points where they're the same. So this would be a point where they're the same and they have the same values. Over here, this would be a point and that would be a point where they have the same values. So when our two equations are equal. Next, we'll isolate and solve for x. And finally, we sub in x to find our y values. So we'll be able to find our x's and then we need to finish the coordinates by finding the matching y's. So now let's do a few examples of these. So for example one, we're going to follow the Sorry, we're going to solve the following system of equations. In other words, find the point of intersection. So those two instructions are completely in interchangeable. So if I said to solve a system of equations or I said to find the point of intersection or intersections, those two things are asking you to do the same thing. So over here, we have a nice graph so that you can see it. We won't always have a graph and that's why you need to know how to do it algebraically. But the graph here will help you to see what we're looking for. So, Let's start by setting our two equations equal to each other. So we have f at x equals x plus 9 and g at x equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. So we're going to start by setting f at x equal to g at x like this. And now let's just fill in what f at x is and what g at x is. That's our first step. Next, we want to solve for x. So because I have an x squared, I need to solve this like a quadratic. So I start by making sure it's equal to zero. Yes, Dimitri, feel free to type your question in the chat. So we're setting our two equations here equal because we're looking for the point of intersection or points of intersection, which is this point and this point. Those are the two points that our two equations share. So those are the two points where the equations equal each other basically. 
So that's how I can find my point of intersection. The other way to think of it is if I had these two equations, I'm just writing it with a y instead of a f at x or g at x, then I could use substitution and sub in the y's. That's the other way to think of it. Okay. So now I've moved everything over to set it equal to zero, and I'm just going to collect some like terms. x squared minus 5x minus 14, like this. And now we're going to solve for x. So I first look to see if I can factor. So two numbers that add to negative 5 and multiply to negative 14 will be negative 7 and positive two. Now I set each bracket equal to zero and solve for x. And if I look on my graph, which in this case we have a graph so we're very fortunate, my x value here is at negative two and my x value here is at seven, like this. So now we need to find the matching y's. And when we find the matching y's, we can find it using either function, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use f at x because it's a simpler function. So I'm gonna find x, sorry, f at seven to find the matching y. So we have seven plus nine, which is going to give me 16. So this one here will be seven, 16. As my coordinate and then we have to do the same thing for negative 2. So that will give me that 7 is my other coordinate here. So very similar to how you would do it with two lines, the only difference is we have a quadratic running through here. So finally my therefore statement would say therefore the POIs are at 7, 16, and negative 2, 7. Like that. Yes, Ethan, feel free to type your question in the chat. While you're typing your question, I'm just going to quickly screenshot who's here for attendance. So how would I go about solving this without a graph? We would do it the exact same way and we're going to do an example of it in a moment, but Basically, you just wouldn't be able to have the visual. So we would do all the algebra the exact same way. We just don't have this visual here to help us. So if you need a bit of a visual, I'd highly recommend drawing a sketch. But our next example will show you how it works without having that visual there. So with that being said, let's move on to our second one. So one where we don't have a graph. So for this one, we have f at x equals negative x squared plus 6x, and g at x equals 2x plus 4. So we want to find the solutions or the point of intersection. So let's start by setting these two things equal to each other. So we have f at x equals g at x. And again, we're doing that because we're trying to find the point or points where these two equal each other. So f at x is negative x squared plus 6x, and g at x is 2x plus 4, like this. So now, because it's a quadratic and we have that x squared, we need to set it equal to 0 to solve it. So we'll have 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 2x plus 4. I just moved everything over to the right side of the equal sign. Now I'm just going to collect some like terms. Like 
like this. And now that I have it equal to zero, I'm going to see if I can factor it in order to solve for x. So if I factor this, we will have x minus 2, x minus 2, like this. And now I just set both brackets equal to zero. So because my brackets are the same, I'm only going to have one answer of x equals 2. So that means we only have one solution at x equals 2. So now that we have the first part of our POI, we need to find the matching y that goes along with it. So to do that, we're just going to take that x value and sub it into one of our equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to use g at x just because it's simpler, but it's up to you. That will give us 4 plus 4, which is 8. So that means my POI is 2, 8. That's my final answer. So that's how you do it without a graph. Exact same steps. We just don't have a visual to check our answer on. But the algebra and the steps are all the same. Are there any questions before we move on to our next example? No, we're okay? All right, let's try another one. So our next example says that Justin is skeet shooting. The height of the skeet is modeled by the function h at t equals negative 5t squared plus 32t plus 2, where h at t is the height in meters and t is the time in seconds after the skeet is released. So in case you don't know what skeet shooting is, basically a disc is shot into the air and your goal is to hit it when you're shooting, like you shoot at it, and your goal is to hit the skeet as it's flying through the air. So you basically have a moving target is what's going on. So the path of Justin's bullet is modeled by the function g at t equals 31.5t plus 1. And again, g at t is going to be our height, and t is going to be our seconds. So how long will it take for the bullet to hit the skeet? How high off the ground will the skeet be when it's hit? So those are two questions that we're looking at. So I'm going to start by drawing a little bit of a diagram here to help us visualize this. So here's our little Cartesian plane. We have our time in seconds on the bottom and our height in meters on our y-axis. And we have our skeet that is going through the air like this with our y-intercept at two. So it's flying through the air, goes up and then goes down. And then we have our bullet that's going to, has a y-intercept of one and is going to go up and we're gonna find out when it hits. So remember, that when we have a situation with time, that at this point, we basically have a stopwatch going off when the whole event occurs. So time's passing, the skeet's going through the air, and then my bullet simultaneously is following the dotted line until it reaches this point. So now let's try to figure out when the two things meet. So in order to do that, we're finding the point of intersection or where these two lines are the same. So let's set the equations equal to each other. So let's sub in our functions. So h of t is negative five t squared plus 32 t plus two, and that is equal to 31.5 t plus one, like that. And now we're going to make it equal to zero because we have that t squared. So we need to solve it like a quadratic. And 
minus 32t minus 2 plus 31.5t plus 1, like this. And now I can collect some like terms here. There we go. And now it's up to you. You can try to factor this, or we can use the quadratic formula. I'm going to use the quadratic formula here. So we have that t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a like this and now I'm just going to simplify that so we have 0 0.5 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 1 And now we remember that our quadratic formula is actually two formulas in one because of this plus minus here. So I can separate it out. t equals 0 0.5 plus root 20.25 all over 10. And t is also equal to 0 0.5 minus root 20.25 all over 10. And because I have decimals in my question with that 31.5, it's okay to have decimals in my answer. So now I'm just going to use my calculator to solve for those. So we will have t is 0 0.5 as our first one, and our second one will be negative 0 0.4. So on the graph, let's identify where those points are, and that will help us to identify which one we'll reject. So we have one at 0 0.5, so that would be our positive one here. So what we're saying is that this is at 0 0.5 seconds. And then we're also learning that although we don't include this negative part, there is another point of intersection down here. But because we can't have negative time, we reject this one. So we reject because we can't have negative time. So the first part says, how long will it take for the bullet to hit the skeet? So from time zero, it will take 0 0.5 seconds. Now the other piece it's asking us is how high off the ground will the skeet be when it's hit? So we're trying to find the height when this is at 0 0.5. So now to find that, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to change this to green so you know that I'm doing that because I'm running out of room. We're just going to sub it into one of our equations and it's easiest if we sub it into G because G is a simpler equation. So G at 0 0.5 will equal 31.5 times 0 0.5 plus one. And that will give us 16.75 meters. And that is our final answer. Therefore, it will be 16.75 meters high. Any questions before we move on to our next example? Okay, so far? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, Dimitri, feel free to type your question.
If anybody else has any other questions before we move on, feel free to write it now because we'll have two more challenging examples. Why is the question square rooted? I'm guessing you mean here and here. The reason I'm using the square root here is I'm just using the quadratic formula. So because this thing doesn't factor nicely, I'm just going to use my quadratic formula to solve, which is just x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Oh yeah, that's all. We've been doing a lot of square root stuff lately, so I know it can kind of get confusing that they're all around the place now. Okay, let's try another example. So these two examples are a little more challenging. So for example three, without solving, determine the number of points of intersection between f at x equals negative three x squared plus x plus six, and g at x equals four x minus 11. So we don't need to know what the answers are, we just need to know how many answers there are. So we're going to start by setting them equal to each other. So we'll have f at x equals g at x, and now we'll write them out. We have three x squared plus x plus six, is equal to 4x minus 11. Now I'm going to go through and simplify that and set it equal to zero again. So no new steps. So all I did is I moved all of the terms over and then I'm just going to collect some like terms like this. There we go. Yep, just making sure I didn't lose any negatives along the way. So now we need to, f oh yes, Keith, you can type your question. So we're not to solve and I'll show you how that works in a moment. So instead of solving, we're just going to use the discriminant. So we're not actually going to solve for what they are. We're just going to find the discriminant to figure out how many solutions we would have. So we're going to use our discriminant, which is the stuff under the square root of our quadratic formula, which is b squared minus 4ac. So that's our a, b, and c. So we'll have negative 5 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 17, and all of that will be 25. Minus 204. And that will give us negative 179. Now because x plus 4x, oh, oops. I did lose a negative there. Thank you. So then that would be a positive three. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll have negative four times three times negative 17. There we go. like that. And then we're just going to add them. So we'll get that our discriminant is 229. So since, yes, feel free to type your question.
So here, when I had the negative 5 squared, I just changed it to 25. So how do you know when to use the discriminant and when to use the quadratic formula? The difference is without solving. So because it says without solving, we don't actually need the exact points of intersection. We can just use um, the discriminant. Oh, yes, you're right. It should be here. I see what you're saying. I misunderstood. There we go. Okay, any other questions before we move on to our next one? Okay, so we have one last quick example and then there'll be some time for some practice problems. So our last one asks, determine the value or values of k, which the line f at x equals seven minus two x never intersects with the quadratic g at x equals x squared plus three x plus k. So we want the two to never intersect, so there are no solutions. So let's start by just simplifying the two equal to one another like this. So let's fill that in. f at x is 7 minus 2x and g at x is x squared plus 3x plus k like this. And now let's set it equal to 0. So even if we're not fully solving but we're using the discriminant, we always need to e have it equal to 0. this. Now let's just collect some like terms. Like this. And now we want to find out the solution where they never intersect. That's what we're looking for here. So let's start by looking at our discriminant here. So for our discriminant, this is our A, this is our B, and all of that stuff is going to be our C. So let's fill in our discriminant. So B squared like this. So remember that for there to be no spaces where they intersect, my discriminant has to be less than zero. So we need to think of what values of k will make this thing less than zero like this. So we have 25 minus 4, negative 7 plus k like this. These ones do get a little tricky. Go, and then we'll have negative four plus 28 plus four K, like this, less than zero. And now, if you are a little unfamiliar with how to deal with inequalities, bear with me, we will be dealing with inequalities later on. So if you've dealt with inequalities before, you're probably familiar with the fact that you can just go through and treat it like an equal sign. If you're struggling with that idea, you can also just think and kind of use trial and error to figure out what values of k will keep this bigger than zero or less than zero. Negative 4k? Oh, yep, I lost a negative there. Thank you. Like 
Okay, so what I can do here is I can just move my 53 over to the other side, just like an equal sign. And then I'm just going to divide. So we divide here by negative four, divide by negative four. Now when I have an equality and I divide by a negative, I have to switch the inequality around. So I'll have 53 over four, like that. And that would be our final answer. Are there any questions about that one? That one's a little bit harder than some of the other ones. Okay, so if there are no more questions, if people have a few more, feel free to type them. There is some homework problems in the textbook. So they're on page um, 198. Number one to four, six, eight, and 12. So those are the practice problems for this lesson. So there's a few things that you can be working on right now. So you can be working on those practice problems. And hopefully you had a chance to work on lesson 3.5. And then you can finish your task and then for block D, there is an independent lesson as well. So there's lots to be working on. So with that being said, that's it for our live lesson, unless there's more questions. But if you don't have any questions, you are all set to go work on the earlier lesson from today, this one, and then the following one. And then we will check back in at 3.15 for our end of the day meeting. Yes, Jessica, you can type your question. And Ashal, you can type your question too. Again, if you don't have any questions, you're more than welcome to um, leave. Yes, so the quiz tomorrow is lessons 3.1 to 3.3. That's it, no discriminant questions on the quiz. For, is this for example three on here or is that for the task? Jessica, that for the, here, for question three, this one here? So when you find the discriminant, there will be two solutions. So because our discriminant is bigger than one, we should have two solutions. So we have three squared minus four times three times negative 17, and we get 213. So because this number here is positive, that means there will be two solutions. I don't need to know what they are. I just need to know that there are two. Does that answer your question? Perfect. So again, if you don't have questions, feel free to sign off and then we'll meet again at 315.